So uh, after working more with the system I, since the last video, I've had a couple of drive over speed errors uh, during copying. I think as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, the alignment procedure uh, in, in, in the Apple documentation seems to indicate setting the speed on the drive a little bit under 300 RPM. I, it's kind of hard to say. There's a di diagnostic that's being ran that's showing speed. Uh, and then at some point it says set it from you know zero to like minus five, someplace in that range. I did some searches on Google, not Google, geez, on eBay, looking for Apple II diagnostic software. I found this disc. It wasn't too expensive. I'm not really sure what's on it, but I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at it and see what I've got here. Uh, Again, it's from the same company I got the bootable media from. Very happy with the other two discs. So we've got this Computer Inspector version 1.0. Uh, if there's documentation for it, I haven't found it yet. But I thought I'd go ahead, jump in and boot this, assuming it's bootable media, and see what we've got. And then if it's got kind of what I'm looking for, we'll uh, shift the camera over, open up a drive, and see what we can figure out. So, uh, Apple powers on, heads of step back, uh, computer inspector, so it is a bootable disk. It just walked out, look at the four drives, disk drive test, RAM test, so machine identification. I will come back and look at this in the menu. I've got the weird video artifacts again in the inverse video. Uh, we're going to look at that possibly in a later video. These DRAMs I have in here are 300 nanosecond. I believe the system calls for 200 nanosecond. I know that the video timing on the machine is interleaved with the processor access to this first 16K bank down here. My first thought is to maybe put some 200 nanosecond parts in here and just see if I can get this video, this weird noise in the video that we'll see demonstrated here in a minute, cleaned up. Uh, anyhow, let's... Uh, reposition the camera and come back and we'll look through this uh, computer inspector software. Now hopefully I've got most of the glare on the screen removed here. And it looks to me at least on the uh, camera monitor that we've got a pretty good video. So again we'll just take a quick look at the floppy of uh, this computer inspector 1.0 that I picked up on eBay. Uh, while I'm here I'm going to put a right protect tab on this floppy just because I don't know what this software is going to do and I don't want it to accidentally write to that floppy during a test. I'm sure it's smart enough not to do that but one never knows and I should probably make a copy of this floppy as well uh, but I'm going to hopefully not be stupid here and test directly off the master floppy. So let's go ahead and look at the menu options. I guess the other thing hopefully you, you can see here is the weirdness in the in verse video uh, there where really it looks like the second third maybe fourth scan lines just have weird noise on them I don't have a real clue what that is that could be the character generator ROM acting a little weird but if I remember how the reverse video on this works it's not reverse video on the ROM it's done in hardware to basically flip the bit so I'm kind of confused by that. Like I say, maybe DRAM speed. But anyhow, let's look through the options here and see what we've got. So machine identification. Uh, that's correct. It's an Apple II Plus 64K with a language card and two disk controllers. I'm not sure that the monitor adjustment will be able to do anything for me here normal text and graphics. Well, let's look and see what we've got. So normal text and graphics. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, we can see we've got a linearity issue with the monitor adjustment. This bottom circle is definitely rounder than this top one and that's going to, I'm sure, be monitor linearity. We're looking at this on a green screen BMC monitor, uh, not an Apple monitor. Uh, this monitor has not been serviced. But you know, that's not bad. Uh, I'm really sure that could be fixed with that linearity in the monitor itself. 
Escape back. Super high res is option two. I don't have a 2GS, so I can't look at that. I don't have any column card either, so I suspect this won't work. That's what I thought. We don't have a printer. Let's take a peek at the RAM test, just out of curiosity. We'll let it make a, a cycle here. So I'm not sure how extensive a test that was. Uh, testing RAMs can get interesting. Uh, I have no idea if they're doing things like write disturb or read disturb testing. Uh, I'm sure there's no, well I know there's there's no way they're doing topology testing here where you're trying to test adjacent cell, cells because you don't know the actual layout of the die in the machine. Uh, when I was a test engineer at National Semiconductor working on EEPROMs, uh, but look at the design of the EEPROM, look at the physical layout of the die to basically come up with how they did the coding on the die. And from there I could identify adjacent cells and rows and columns and then come up with data patterns that would basically, you, you, you know, right, alter, alternating ones and zeros. So a cell with a one in it would have the top, bottom, right, and left cells to that with zeros in it and the inverse of that. And then you would do multiple programming and erase passes to make sure that there weren't shorts between cells kind of stuff. Uh, that was a big chunk of testing EEPROMs back in the 80s. Uh, I'm sure there's nothing really that sophisticated here. There really can't be. I don't have joysticks or paddles. I'm sure information is just exactly that. It just gives us information. So let's go back to the disk drive test and see what we've got there. Drive speed, that's what I was hoping to find. Let me uh, grab some scratch media here. A couple of things I've read says in order to test drive speed it actually writes a pattern to one of the uh, uh, tracks on the disk so that it can read that back and basically look at the speed the bits are changing. Uh, so I've got scratch media at this point in all four, almost all four drives. Uh, I have one more scratch disk here. I do. None of these are formatted so I don't know if this is going to work or not. So I've got scratch media in all four drives. Let's just see what we get. Sort of blank or use disk in slot six drive one. Yep, it will be erased. That's why I pulled the uh, computer inspector disk out. Space bar to continue. Yeah, the recommended disk speed is 299 RPM. Speeds between so and so you know my manual tweaking got this drive to 299 you can see it switching up to 300 and should get satisfactory results so it's interesting to me that they like it a little tiny bit slow you know the the calling all the way down to 296 that's interesting so let's go back and look at the drive that's given me the most trouble drive speed we want to look at how do i move up and down here in the menu system, I have no idea how to use arrows to move. Okay, it's the side arrows to move up and down. So let's look at drive two. And see, that one's right at 300. So when I did that visual calibration on, in the previous video, looking at the spindle, I actually got these really close. And, and again, that's because the LED lighting in my shop. Uh, it's 60 it's 60 hertz power here or actually flickering at 60 hertz and I was able to use that little calibration disk so this one could be a little bit slower and this is the one that's given me the drive over speed let's go back and look at slot 5 drive 1 again I did a really good job visually uh, setting that speed however it's only Again, a tad bit fast, and I think this one's also thrown a drive over speed error. So all I'll do is pull the uh, case off the drive, and we'll get this on video. I don't have to strip the drive totally out, get to that little set screw, and we'll tweak these down slightly. So let's look at the final drive. Come 
current speed is oh the uh, door's not closed and there it is well I did a really good job to visually uh, set the speed on these uh, so yeah we'll have to open all four up tweak them down a little bit and like I said we'll do that on video so let's look at some of the other tests here general operation Checking the ability of the disk drive to accurately read, write, and locate data on the disk. Insert a blank disk and again it's a scratch disk. I suspect it's formatting at the moment. I do have a five and a quarter inch alignment disk here someplace. The drive seems to be functioning properly. Let's look at general operation of the next drive. I have read through again a couple of different service manuals for these drives, and you know, now I'm convinced that it said do not lubricate the rails that the heads slide on, even though you saw me do that with the lithium grease. I'm going to kind of make a guess here as why that is uh, because if you use as I said in the previous video like a light oil like a three-in-one it attracts dust it gets gummy over time and it actually impedes movement of the head and because these heads aren't using like a worm screw on a stepper motor so there's you know a lot of torque to get the head moved around instead it's got that plastic disc with the spiral cut into it I don't think it'd take a heck of a lot before the little alignment notch would jump out of that slot and the head wouldn't move so that may be why they recommended that look at this drive so yeah this disc is exactly what I was hoping to find here so give me some confidence that the service of the drives was good And let's go to the final drive. So that all looks good. I guess we can test the right protect switch. off. Let's uh, get a disc in there that should. Is the right select notch not actually working? I don't know. Put in a right protected disc. disc in there. Place a right protected disc over the... Oh, press space to continue. Okay, so that one detected the right select, or the right protect. Let me move through all four discs here. I'm pulling the scratch discs out. I've got to find my second camera. Uh, I've misplaced it. Uh, build a new computer for editing video and moved a bunch of stuff around and my second camera vanished during that move which is why I'm not doing like video in video here so right protected disc in yeah, this is what I thought I mean I, I visually looked at those micro switches uh, while I had the drives apart and the, the positioning looked fine on them Right protect. Yeah, I would expect that. I would expect it to be off here. Yep. Let's move on to the final drive. Right protect switch. Ready to take place. Yep. So all four of these, the right protect switch is being detected and working pretty pleased with this. Uh, I don't remember what I spent for it. I think it was around $20 with shipping. 
so which is not too bad I would expect the printer test here to fail I don't have a printer card yep you know these are all good things I just don't have joystick paddles so nothing is attached to yep expected that I'm kind of sad that the RAM test doesn't seem to be able to run continuous. I like to use RAM tests as kind of a burn in. Oh, there's just option C, continuous tests. So that's kind of a, a good little burn in, and that's walking through all the DRAMs. Uh, I'm just going to let this sit and cook for a while. Uh, and I'll come back in a bit, and we'll get a drive opened, and we'll tweak the drives to be down a bit. So I've gone ahead and pulled the floppy controller out of slot 5 and just removed those two drives from the system to make some room. I've got the drive 1 down here on the bottom. I've got a successful copy of the MECC software. That disk is right protected. I've got the drive I want to adjust the speed on sitting up here sideways so I have access back in here. Hopefully you can see it. There's a little 10 turn potentiometer sitting there that we'll use to tweak the speed. I've got a blank floppy here uh, that it requires to test the speed. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this booted up, uh, get you back seeing the screen on the computer, and we'll go from there. So let me uh, power the system up, and we'll get the MECC software loaded. And we'll take a look here just to see if we have too much brightness or not on the monitor. I'll tweak it down a bit, so hopefully you can read it a bit better. And we're going to step down to the disk drive test. I'm going to look at drive speed. We're going to look at drive 2. Let me uh, get the test floppy slotted in. And it's showing 300 RPM, and we wanted to back that down a little. I've got the lab lights off, so it's a little bit hard to see in here. So you can see me slowing it down here. I'm going to kind of get an idea what kind of range, just a little bit the speeds I can get. So I can move it quite a bit. We can of course bring it up faster. So they're saying here speeds between 296 and 302 should give satisfactory results. The recommended drive speed is 299 RPM. So I'm going to try to get it solidly on 299. 299 appears there. 298. So I'm going to try to just kind of center the screwdriver between the two spots I was and get it just to solidly at 299. So this is the drive that gave me the overspeed uh, error several times. And I've only brought it down 1 RPM, but that should be enough, hopefully. So, uh, anyhow, there it is, the uh, MECC disk. It was very useful here. Again, this is just a, a, a plug for them. I'm, of course, not being compensated in any way for this. Uh, you can't hear that drives a little bit noisy. There's a little bit of what I think is maybe bearing noise in it. I could be wrong. This seems to be sitting pretty solidly at 299. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give them a plug here as well. There, there's the card that came. It's the Apple II online store if you want to look for a uh, copy of the floppy or you can find it uh, on eBay which is where I found it. So uh, pretty happy with that. And uh, I guess I'll wrap this up here and we'll talk soon.